video, we'll be going over Form SSA 521, Request for Withdrawal of Application. You would use this uh, Social Security form if you've already applied for Social Security benefits and you choose to withdraw your application in writing. You may do this uh, for a number of reasons. You might have filed for benefits earlier than you had planned and you decide that you'd rather wait uh, so that your payment, uh, your benefit payment amount, your base amount is larger. Uh, perhaps uh, you've got, you know, another uh, reason, like for example, you might have planned to stop working, but then uh, all of a sudden you decided to stay working and you'd rather uh, wait to um, start taking Social Security. So whatever your reason, if you decide to withdraw your application, then you would do so uh, in writing with Form SSA 521. So let's walk through the form. Uh, first, at the top, you know, take some time to digest the notice. So if the Social Security Administration approves your withdrawal request, then the decision uh, that they made on your original application does not apply. Uh, you'll forfeit any rights that you that were attached to that application, including the right to appeal. So uh, since the application uh, determination has no bearing, uh, there's nothing to appeal. If for some reason you've already started receiving payments, you will have to return that payment uh, or such payments uh, that the Social Security Administration has made to you or anyone else based on the application that you're withdrawing. Uh, you must then reapply if you want uh, the Social Security benefits at some point in the future. Uh, and finally, uh, if, if you want to use this procedure, the Social Security Administration warns that you should only do this if your decision to file has resulted or will result in a disadvantage to you. And so your if you need help navigating through this decision, you can make an appointment at your local Social Security office, have a conversation with the representative, and go over whether or not filing this form is the right decision. So, assuming that you don't have any questions, this form is fairly straightforward. It is a one-page document, the form itself. On page two, there is a space for any additional remarks or information that may not uh, uh, fit on the first page, and then uh, there's the requisite Privacy Act statement followed by the Paperwork Reduction Act statement. According to the Paperwork Reduction Act statement, uh, it should take you about five minutes to complete this form. So starting at the top, you would put the name of the person whose record you're applying uh, for. So uh, if you're a spouse of a Social Security employee, like a wage earner or an eligible individual, then you would put that person's name, not yours, uh, followed by their social security number in the top line. Now, it, again, using the spouse example, uh, you would then write your information in the second line, first name, middle name, initial, and last name, followed by your social security number. Obviously, if you are the applicant and the individual whose earnings you're requesting benefits from, you would not need to do this. The type of benefit that you would like to withdraw, is it retirement benefits, is it spousal benefits, is it um, benefits based on a decedent uh, earning, is it disability benefits? Whatever the type of benefit that you want to withdraw your application, and then the date of application would be uh, appropriate in this middle block. Uh, if you've made more than one type of uh, application in the in the recent past, then this will help the Social Security Administration narrow down which application uh, you would like to withdraw. And then, if you've also uh, applied to uh, for Medicare benefits, then do you want to keep them or not? Uh, you probably should consider keeping them, unless you happen to uh, still be eligible for Medicare benefits 
under an employer plan or sorry, employer sponsored health care benefits, uh, and you're subject to uh, the late enrollment uh, penalty, which applies to people who do not apply for Medicare uh, on or about their 65th birthday. So if you're older than the age of 65, you should strongly consider uh, whether or not you want to keep your Medicare benefits. So uh, we'll go through just really quickly what this verbiage means in the middle. Uh, basically, you're stating that you understand that uh, this request may not be canceled more than 60 days after being sent in the mail. And if, uh, if there was a determination, uh, then you must repay all the benefits on the application that you want to withdraw. And then everyone else whose benefits uh, would have been affected must also consent. Uh, and then finally, you also understand that uh, the withdrawn application and everything you submitted uh, will remain part of the Social Security Administration's records. Uh, this withdrawal will not uh, affect any crediting of your wages or self-employment income. Basically, any paperwork that you submitted uh, for your benefits, the Social Security Administration will keep or safeguard any supporting documents that are actually yours, uh, identity documents, things of that nature, uh, they should be returned back to you. So uh, the, mo the main reason why most people would uh, withdraw their application is that they intend to continue working. And, it, and you're also acknowledging that there are alternatives to withdraw under, uh, for applicants under full retirement age. And so you still want to withdraw your application after uh, knowing those uh, alternatives. And then two, if there's another reason, then you would enter that. Uh, if you need to continue uh, your written narrative on the back, then you would check this continued on reverse, and you would simply continue on, on the back page. So at the bottom, signature of person making request, you're going to sign and date the form. Uh, make sure you use a pencil. Uh, and then uh, include your telephone number, mailing address to include your street number uh, uh, and street address or post office box, uh, city and state, zip code. If you, name, if you live in a county, you can enter the county's name. If for some reason you're not able to sign uh, your signature and you sign with an X, you're allowed to do so. However, you must have two witnesses that know you uh, be able to uh, state their name in written form as well as their address. And then at the bottom, you'll see a section for, for use of Social Security Administration. Uh, you should not touch this, but obviously uh, the Social Security Administration employee will check the appropriate box, either approved or not approved because of whatever reason, either you have not repaid your benefits yet, uh, there was consent uh, required from other individuals that you did not obtain, or if there's another reason that they would attach paperwork to that. So, and then on the back, again, there's a Privacy Act statement. Basically, it says that Social Security Administration will use the information you provide to cancel your applications, uh, they may, the SSA may also share your information uh, to volunteers and other workers who are technically not federal employees but do work for the SSA and may need to access some personally identifiable information in your records to do that or to contractors and other federal agencies uh, who may assist the Social Security Administration from time to time. So all of this is on the uh, uh, on the website, we've provided a, a complete guide on how to uh, fill out this form. Simply go to teachmepersonalfinance.com, type in uh, form SSA 521, and this uh, article should appear. If you like our articles, please uh, subscribe to our newsletter on our website, teachmepersonalfinance.com. If you like our YouTube videos, please subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel. And as always, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, uh, please 
post them either in the comments section or send me an email. Thank you very much and have a great day.